happening tonight in Vancouver. I think it's going to be fantastic. It feels like a way out of this. And it's what many families in BC have been waiting for. Registration for COVID-19 shots now open to everyone 12 years old and over. Well, I think the VPD jumped the gun. Last week, Vancouver police mistook a black retired BC Supreme Court judge in his 80s for a much younger and violent man. Just ahead, two women who were assaulted that day claim the VPD's version of events is not accurate. But they haven't given us any option. There's nowhere to go. They just, you know, they want you gone and that's it. They don't care. A makeshift RV camp has reached over two dozen vehicles in East Vancouver. And now the city says they want them out. But where are they supposed to go? This is City News Everywhere. The youngest in BC able to receive COVID-19 vaccines are one step closer to getting them. As a parent and an educator, it's a tremendous relief for us to know this is coming. Registration for COVID-19 shots in the province now open to everyone 12 years old and over. Chelsea Miller heard a rumor earlier today this could be coming, so she decided to use her break time from the school where she's a student teacher to take a shot at getting her son a shot. Knowing that 12 plus was going to be our sweet spot category for our son, uh, we decided to just go for it and give it a try. So I pulled out his care card and popped open the computer and lo and behold, we were able to register. She would have been one of the first because until late afternoon, the province's website was still saying 18 plus only could register. Details of the when and how for this youth vaccination plan coming in Thursday's briefing. Schools may well be used, especially in smaller communities, as you can imagine, where, where the school is the primary place where people would come together for a clinic. So that may well be the case in some places, so there's not uh, there's not going to be a hard and fast rule, but generally we're using our current clinic system. In urban centers, the minister says existing clinics is where these shots will be given, despite the teachers union pushing for clinics in schools. Chelsea says no matter where youth get their shots, she thinks most families will do whatever is necessary to get to them. It feels like a way out of this and it's something that our child has been eagerly anticipating and, and regularly checking the news himself to see when this was going to happen for him. So as a parent and an educator, it's a tremendous relief for us to know this is coming. For City News in Victoria, I'm News 1130's Lisa Yuzda. There are 521 new cases of COVID-19 across the province tonight and eight more people have died in the last day. 340 people are currently in hospital, 118 are in intensive care. More than 2.6 million British Columbians have now had at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. The, the reason I finally you know, decided to say something is because of this wrongful arrest. Last week, Vancouver police mistook and detained a retired BC Supreme Court judge who is a black man in his 80s for a much younger and violent man. And now two women who were assaulted by the actual suspect are perplexed by the way police acted that day. Well, I think the VPD jumped the gun and, and they seemed it almost seemed predestined that they would do that. Fatima Jaffer and her friend Maya Veek weren't there to see when retired BC Supreme Court Justice Selwyn Romilly was mistakenly cuffed by Vancouver police. But they were here on the seawall when the actual suspect took a swing at Jaffer. And somehow he just kind of went off and uh, came right at us and right onto me and swiped. And I leaned back and jumped into Maya. Uh, and he missed. Uh, and Maya screamed at that point because she was so shocked that I jumped into her. Jaffer describes the attacker as quite disturbed and that he was speaking gibberish. After the man jumped at a woman on a bench, Jaffer started recording this video and he left the scene. Yes. Yeah, and me too. At this point, a well-known community member named Kentish, who often tends to these flowers on the seawall, goes after the attacker to make sure they wouldn't hurt anyone. What disturbed me the most was, though, that Kentish had gone after him. And I didn't want Kentish um, hurt because he's a black man and I don't trust the cops when it comes to black people. The two decide not to call the police, but on their way home, Javer spoke with a VPD officer at English Bay, explicitly telling them it was not a black man they should be looking for. Also, Fatima says the officer didn't even ask for her name and feels they were more focused on catching the perpetrator rather than listening to what she had to say. And the only reason they talked to the cop was to make sure they don't go after Kentish. 
So I was absolutely shocked that night when I read on Facebook that a justice, a black man who we are familiar with on the seawall was wrongfully arrested instead. I don't understand what triggered them other than his skin color to, to, to arrest Justice Romley. In a statement, VPD Sergeant Steve Addison says in part, retired Justice Romley matched the description provided to officers, a dark-skinned man, 40 to 50 years old, with a shaved head, dark pants, jacket, and red shirt, but that it quickly became clear he was not the suspect. He adds, there were a number of callers on this case, as well as people flagging down officers as they were doing their patrols. As you can imagine, it was a dynamic situation with lots of information coming in real time from various sources. The suspect was arrested and taken to jail, but since any witnesses or victims were unavailable yeah, or had declined to provide statements, no charges can presently be recommended to Crown Counsel. Jaffer is still shocked by the outcome. It wasn't just that I was assaulted, it was also that I had talked to the police um, and told them they knew better. In Vancouver, Kier Junos, City News. I was flabbergasted. Like what harm are we doing? It's untenable what's happening at the moment um, with the number of vehicles uh, on the street. Where are they supposed to go? That's the question on at least two dozen people's minds who are living at this makeshift RV camp in East Vancouver. As the city tells them in one week, they need to be gone. I mean, they don't have any understanding whatsoever. They just, you know, they want you gone and that's it. They don't care. Glenn Radowit has lived at the makeshift RV camp near Slocan Street and East 12th Avenue since November when his father passed away and he had nowhere left to go. Now that the city of Vancouver has handed out its final notice demanding all the RVs leave the area by next Wednesday, he's at a loss for what to do next. When I got here, my vehicle stopped running. I'm in the midst of trying to get it running again. It, I got it running, but now I, I got to change the fuel pump in the gas tank. And in my condition, I just can't do it. For years, the area has drawn people living in their vehicles looking for a place to park. But in Vancouver, you're not allowed to park large vehicles like RVs on city streets overnight. Taryn Scollard is Vancouver's director of streets. She says the city began reaching out to people earlier this year to let them know enforcement would be coming in the next few months. People that are struggling to find a place to go, we have engaged our Carnegie Outreach Services. Not only um, their contact information on all of the warning letters that we have given to the RVs, but also they've been on site at least twice um, to try and connect with uh, RV occupants um, for those that are in need of additional services. I went down there and talked to them to, to get on the uh, BC housing or whatever, but you know what, it takes years to get in. And for the price of it and that, I mean, I'm, I'm on disability and the whole disability check would have to go towards rent. And what are you supposed to live on? Scholard says the city will also tow these RVs for free anywhere in the lower mainland if the owner has a legal spot to park it. They're also offering to store the RVs for a month while the owners look for a place to live. Katie Fitzpatrick lives across the street from the makeshift encampment, and she hopes the city will reconsider the eviction. I think with the pandemic especially, like people have been really hard hit, and living in the neighborhood, it doesn't bother me for them to be here. Todd Salome has lived in his RV for six months now. He says despite the threat of tickets or even being towed, he doesn't plan on going anywhere. Well, for one thing, I'm going to sit in it. They're going to ticket me. Well, eventually they have to leave. I don't know what I'd do. I mean, I'm in bad enough condition as it is. Residents at the RV camp on Slocan have planned a rally on May 26 to protest the eviction. The same day the city has told them they need to leave. In East Vancouver, Ashley Burr, City News. Contractors in Vancouver are being told to take some extra precautions. Vancouver police are seeing a jump in the number of break and enters at building sites this year as lumber prices rise. They point to thieves who took off with $10,000 worth of plywood from just one construction site, and more than half a dozen similar heists have also been recently reported. Police aren't sure if the break-ins are the work of one person or a group of suspects. There's a push for Vancouver businesses to work together and ask for more financial help under the pandemic. Cyrus Lee with the Chinatown Business Improvement Association says the community doesn't qualify for new tourism grants. But he says Chinatown is a vital attraction and should be getting more relief along with areas like Gastown and Mount Pleasant. I think three levels of government should, should help uh, 
uh, especially Chinatown, because uh, right now there's a lot of vacancy and uh, we'll hope we'll bring back more people to open business later when the COVID-19 is over. He says the doctor Sun Yat-sen Garden might get enough visitors to apply for relief, but that's not enough to bring people back to Chinatown. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Your next edition of City News is tonight at 11. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.